YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got something all new for you today from Blade. Look at this Infusion 120 fly barless little 3D heli. And yes, you can fly this in a non 3D fashion and you'll see it by yours truly right here on Brian Phillips RC. We set ours up on the NX10 today and we will have in this very video, our Unbox Build Radio setup. Of course, there isn't any build at all. You literally take it out, stick a battery in, and go to town. So without further ado, we're gonna do just that. Go to town. Throttle hold is off. Camera crew and I are gonna be right next to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and spool it up in normal mode and just show you how well this thing sits. A little bit of a tip tendency as you spool up. We do indoor flights for you today on this video. And so we're gonna go ahead and get right where you can see. As you can see, guys, look at this. Got a little bit of drift forward right now. But look at that thing. Just absolutely easy to fly. I am no expert heli pilot, as you already know. Heli pilot, I should say. And you can see in the backdrop, you see the wind sock, folks? Look at this. See the wind sock? All I'm doing is just kind of hovering the stick to keep my altitude exactly right. And all I got to say is this thing is one of the most comfortable helicopters to fly for me, being an inexperienced pilot that I am, at least as it pertains to helicopters. And I gotta say, indoor flight, totally doable. That tail keeps up with even the wind. Of course, it's not like crazy winds, but it's definitely got a little bit to it right now. And look at that thing just staying locked in, loving it. And then still have a little bit of power. This is on a 2S with a micro pH three pin connector, a balance lead connector. Now also I just wanna point out one other awesome detail and that is that we have a full range of telemetry. I'm just gonna scroll over so you can see it, which includes things like RPMs, pack voltage, all the stuff that you need to know so you can fly your helicopter and fly it with confidence. And folks, this thing, I'm not suggesting that you Enrique helicopters ever, but I gotta say this thing, even in the wind, it's doing just fine for me. Now, if you wanna do 3D, no problem. All you have to do is the flip of a switch and then there's also panic, okay? So the panic is on the eye switch in this case. And we did set that up. We'll show you exactly how to do it in the unbox build radio setup portion, which is gonna basically immediately follow this. Okay, so we'll go into stunt one. There we go. So as you can see, I flipped it over. And look at this, guys. I'm flying it along like it's no problem. Very good controls. I don't even feel like I have to immediately flip it out. But I just wanna show you something. I'm gonna go a few mistakes high, flip it upside down, and then pan it, guys. Panic, panic, panic. You guys see this? I'm holding the panic button. And look at that, panic. Now I'm gonna flip it back. And look at this, now I can just bring it right back to where I am, okay? So that's one thing that's really nice. Now, of course, I was a few mistakes high just to help demonstrate that the panic button works good. Now, I'll bring it down low where you can maybe see it. There we go. One thing I just wanna point out is that when you're reaching for the eye switch, okay, which is up here, you automatically have almost immediate access down to your flight mode switch, which is on switch B, okay? So throttle holds on. When you go to reach for this, you press it, and then if you're in stunt one or stunt two, it will auto level and allow you to have some fly control, flight controls. But remember, you're gonna limit your flight controls during that setup. That's gonna put you into an auto leveling configuration and it's gonna help you recover, which is super nice, okay? So we're gonna take back off. You may have heard some warnings there as we were doing that. So it looks like our low was 6.6 .6 volts. We're at 7.4 volts. And uh, basically it says 10% output, throttle holds on. Looks like that must be the, the, the empty draw on that motor. I, I'm not really sure why it says that. But either way, all I've got to say is this thing is flying really nice and I'm not a great pilot. So we're gonna try some more right now. Okay, we're gonna spin it up and just show you. You don't really have to keep your hands on the sticks, but I like to just resist those little bumps that we'll get during spool up and then bring it off the ground. 
get it flying, let everything get up to speed. And then I'm just gonna bring it over here where we can maybe see, I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna go to stunt two this time. Okay, so here's stunt two, there's up, there's down. You can see it's definitely a little bit pissed at me right now. Now right back in to normal mode. That's why I love flying with a blade product. And I know some of you guys are into even more advanced and more insane, very well done helis. And that's not to take anything away from Blade's product line, but I can definitely tell you this, this thing is not gonna break the bank. It's not gonna put you into bankruptcy. You're not gonna have to remortgage the house and you still get a lot of fun out of it. So, can't, you're, you're still learning how to fly a helicopter. Yep, that's right. And it's not like you're out here with some computer controlled thing that's gonna be GPS tracked and all that junk. It just basically does the bare minimum. And you see how quick you can get out of a mistake like that. Now, I'm just gonna admit right now, I've told you a million times, I'm not the best heli pilot, and yet I can flip it over and do all of these maneuvers. I can't help but feel like I'm gonna get to a critically low point here. So what I'm gonna probably do is I'll go ahead and bring it back. We'll just get a nice smooth landing, just show you can be done. Okay, nice smooth landing. Okay, we're gonna throw on our throttle hold. And it's super easy to swap batteries. And since that was a relatively short flight, right there, 13 seconds, that's not a one out timer. They want it set to be just a, when you're over 25%, mm -hmm. it's gonna start, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap. The camera crew's gonna hold the radio for a second. This is the type you need. You can do a 280 with the old style shorter leads. Just make sure you have the micro pH connector like this. And that's not to be confused with the balance lead on this style. This would be like a 50C pack. And guys, the only thing I wish I would have seen is a JST plug on here because I would have loved to see that JST for extra current handling. But look at this, guys. Right here, that's a Hextronics balance lead for a 2S pack. This is a JST. This is a micro pH. You want this kind, okay? Not this kind, okay? So also, when you get this, there's a special charger adapter that you may need to order if you haven't already. We'll make sure to link to that in our video description below, which is also where you can find this helicopter. Now, we are in hold, throttle hold. I'm gonna pop this off here. I'm gonna pop this off here. This is gonna come off. Super easy, very lightweight. You can see inside of here, long throw linear servos with the reinforced plastic cases, which help to keep those clean. And they just generally work better. That is your bind plug, by the way. So in our unbox build radio setup, we thought it was down here. It's actually up here, okay? It does come with a necessary bind plug to bind your heli. And swapping batteries is super easy. I found that chasing that tail through that opening there works really nice to help with cable management. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick that in my pocket. So I like it with the label up and I'll slide it back. It goes into this tray, fits perfect with absolutely no problems. Now, if you have an older, more puffed up pack, that might become a bit of, a bit of an issue for you. Once you plug it in, as with all helis or airplanes, get the thing on the ground, get that on a counter, something like that. Let it stabilize. Okay, so we should be good to go. You can kind of hear it be, it's real quiet on video, I'm guessing. I'm gonna slide this over. There's a small piece of Velcro on the bottom that kind of helps hold that tight to the bottom. Okay, so it's right here. Ours was a little pre-loved from the uh, product development team at Horizon. They uh, pre-crashed it for me, which is ironic because usually I'm the one that gets to crash them. Well, this time it wasn't my, my turn evidently, but that's okay. Uh, this thing is supposed to be resilient to crashes, but I kind of say it like this. Uh, no boat is waterproof, even submarines, they're pressurized. All right, so here we go. So throttle cut is off. We're gonna take off. Now with a brand new fresh battery, I'll try to do just a little bit of 3D-ish stuff. Look how quick you can get off the ground. And we'll just bring you around. And one of the things I really, really, really like about this thing, obviously that's our timer, so I will go ahead and clear that now. That was the button from me holding the clear button. It does that blah, 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 noise. Okay, so here we go. So I go up two. Holy crap, that thing is not dead yet. Whew, that's crazy. Did you see how hard that hit? Yeah. Okay, so what did I break? Let's talk about it for a second. We broke that thing. Okay, so I gotta see. This thing feels like it's gonna fly right now, except for my that's kind of nutty. 
That did not look terrible at all. I mean, it was terrible that I crashed. Okay, we're in normal mode. Let's see what happens. It's direct drive. Oh yeah, we might need a little bit to get it, get it off the ground. Let's see if we can get it off the ground. <laughs> it's crazy we just crashed this thing guys look at that you're not gonna find that on most alleys i can tell you that now i'm just gonna tell you full disclosure probably not the best idea to fly them right after you crash them but evidently mine has been crashed already before i even got it so i gotta say that is incredible and stick inputs feel exactly the same oh man i'm a believer now <laughs> i've crashed a few helicopters in my day folks and let's just say this, let's, okay, so I'm gonna go back to idle up. Okay, so that's idle up or flight mode one. Okay, flight mode two, there we go. Oh, that is so cool, guys. I cannot believe I did not kill it. Okay, now back to normal mode because I started drifting away from myself. Orientation being lost is just part of flying helicopters and having human eyes. I don't know how these 3D pilots do it, to be honest, and obviously my <laughs> my canopy is tipped up. It looks all goofy. But that is so nutty. I can't believe how easy that thing went back together. I didn't put it back together. That's the key. Oh, man. So I don't want to give bad advice. Obviously, after you crash a helicopter, it's better to kind of look it over and really get an idea of what's broke. But let's look. The thing is absolutely rock solid still, which is crazy because I'm just going to demonstrate something. My, my Blade 230S... I made a mistake and I flew over into that tree line, crashed down there in that creek, right beyond where I am now. Went over, picked it up, flew it back home. It was awesome, okay? So I gotta say, folks, if you're afraid of crashes like every other heli pilot that has ever existed in the history of mankind, then this helicopter might be for you. Now, in order to land this, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful because one of my landing skids is cracked. Now, I'm gonna fix it with epoxy. So I'm gonna go straight in. See how I'm just kind of leaning away from the crack. And then I just wanna get it to spool down and just use the controls to just keep it from tipping. That is incredible, guys. I'm so excited. I've never been so excited to have crashed a heli in my career, my RC career. But that is so crazy, guys. Look, I just broke that leg right there, which I can totally fix. I'm sure it's probably like a $3 part. And then I did break my canopy, which is kind of annoying. But you know what? Let's see if we can bring that back down. That is incredible, folks. We've crashed a lot of stuff for you here on Brian Phillips RC, but all I'm gonna say is that is exactly what they said this thing was, was resilient to crashes. Now, I didn't expect to actually crash it for you. I was hoping to maybe like demonstrate it when the grass got tall or something, but holy cow, I smashed it into the concrete That's and it did bad. just fine. So guys, the only victim was this thing and the battery actually was pulled forward Camera crew, if you don't mind holding that for just a sec. So the battery got pushed forward during the crash and that's pretty much the worst of it. Incredible, my throttle hold is on. I'm gonna move the pitch up and down. I'm gonna roll left and right. I'm just gonna check my ball links. Now I'm gonna go collective up, collective down. That is so crazy, guys. I'm super thrilled how well that did. So anyway, right here on Brian Phillips RC, as usual, we build them. We Well, first of all, we help you order them. And then you get them in your house. We help you unbox them. We help you do the radio setup. We help you fly them. And we help you crash them. Sometimes we help you fix them. <laughs> so without further ado, guys, stay tuned. I can't wait. I'm going to go. I could CA that thing together in 30 seconds, and this thing would be unrecognizably crashed, which is pretty cool. This might. That canopy's not that bad. No, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. I'll put some it's tape in there. Broken. Nobody's ever going to know any better except that we publish the video online. So, guys, if you want to have a similar experience, less the crash, then A, get a simulator, B, watch our video, and C, follow the links in the video description below, and you can get one of these beautiful things for your very own. And all you have to do is check out the video description. If you want to support us in other ways, we have Patreon, PayPal, YouTube members, and... YouTube super YouTube thanks. super thanks. All of you guys are much appreciated, but we'd still rather you be buying amazing aircraft with those RC bucks. But if you can't, we'll take it. And we appreciate you guys being there for us. We really do. At the end of the day, we just want you guys in the air flying with us and not just watching us. That's why we're always here trying to get people out of the woodwork, 
that wouldn't normally consider a helicopter like this because they're like, hey, I can't afford it, B, I don't have the skill, C, I don't have the equipment, I don't have the charger. We're gonna help you work through all of those issues systematically until you're in the air. And that's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. So we hope we can encourage you in that exact pursuit. If you guys have other questions, leave them in the comments below. If you wanna learn more about this Blade product, the Infusion 120, then just stay tuned. We're gonna unbox, build, radio setup, and put it to flight inside. But it just full warning, I did not fly it upside down onto the ceiling, okay? Because <laughs> no. I didn't want to disappoint myself by crashing. So I saved that for this save morning. Save that for today. Yeah. All right, guys, that's all you get. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. It's coming right now. YouTube, you have a box. It's right here. And we're opening it before your very eyes. Let's see what's inside of here. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Brown paper. Oh, cool. We have a shipping thing in here I have to take care of. In my pocket. <laughs> what do we have here? It's the Infusion 120 from Blade. High performance 3D helicopter for imme intermediate pilots. Okay, so what is this? This is a small heli. We're gonna fly it. We're gonna set it up. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna see how good it is so you guys can make a decision if you want one yourself. If you do, as usual, check it out in the links of the video description below. Infusion 120, smart technology inside. Carbon reinforced nylon. Skill level two, easy to fly, has safe. So that's good, so that'll give us auto leveling and that's gonna help get us in the air. Okay, without further ado, we're just gonna bust right into it today. Wow. Okay, so that was pretty easy unbox. And look at this cute little thing. Amazing. Oh yeah, fly barless, direct drive. Sweet. And then a little teeny tiny brushless motor on the tail, so oh, sweet. So cute. And then right here we've got the Spectrum SPMX HM1015. Uh, and it looks like 2305, 1300 kV motor. That's a big motor. And then it looks like it's using long throw linear servos here to move the controls. Uh, super easy to take the canopy off or, yeah. Looks like this is broken. So that's always nice right there. So we're gonna see what happened there. This might have been a product sample guys. So hopefully yours won't be broke but ours is plastic blades painted and it's got a micro pH plug here that goes straight into the flight controller and then some big gigantic gaudy label which we're going to immediately remove looks like the adjustments here are pinch style adjustments so very basic this thing is super light uh, that is one spec we looked up beforehand what was the spec camera crew should be 123 grams approximately this is like super thick plastic yes. by the way which is a little bit unusual and then it comes with what appears to be um some sort of, is that a bind plug do we need a bind plug i don't know i'm not sure i don't remember seeing that and then there is a manual let's show the people what comes in here okay so here is the manual and then here's the bag i was talking about we've got a regular servo plug that goes into this small plug. And then there's that, which I don't know what that does. I think it might be to rotate the direction of a servo, if I remember right, from a long time ago. Hmm. Could be just a bind plug, but I'm not sure what it is. I guess the instruction manual might answer some questions, so we're gonna actually refer to the instruction manual on this heli to make sure we don't give you bad advice. Now, one thing we aim to do on Brian Phillips RC, as usual, is we want to show you exactly what these things are made of. And just keeping in mind, I am only as good as I am at piloting these aircraft. Obviously, as you know, we do lots of airplanes and we do some helis too. As you can see over here, there's a few of them. And we, or I should say I, 
have gotten better with helis, but I'm still limited on what I can do. And so I just want you guys to take worth a grain of salt. If you don't see me doing a bunch of aggressive 3D, uh, don't think it can't be done just because I'm not doing it. Now let's look over this real quick. What do we have there, camera crew? Anything special and exciting? Got our size specs, ESC receiver all in one, direct drive. And it's a 2S battery, 300 it's milliamps? 2S. Yeah, 280 to 300 milliamp. Okay, Fully so let's assembled. talk about batteries for a minute. Okay. This is what we're gonna use. 300 milliamp hour, micro pH, 2S connector, okay? So if you've got a smart charger, I like to use the 2200, the S2200, that's what we use most of the time. Dual 200 watt channels, two of them. You got IC3, IC5, top and bottom. But for something like this, you could easily get away with the I, or excuse me, the uh, S155, which of course is gonna allow you to do all the same things, but it's got a smaller screen, so it's a little harder to share. Don't forget, you need to have one of these fancy adapters, okay? This adapter allows you to split off and then have a balance lead and your main discharge lead. And really it's just a couple of strategically placed parallel leads. So let's show you how this works. So when you plug this in, it's gonna act like a dumb battery because it is a dumb battery. You can see here, and I say dumb meaning not smart. Okay, then you'll set your speed 0.3 amps, and there it is. This is 300 milliamps or 0.3 amps. And then you'll just start it, okay? So in this case, you can also see right here that, there it goes, now it's starting. So you'll see this charge rate's gonna go up and it's gonna immediately drop down. That's because it's fully charged. Okay, so we'll disconnect that battery. And then basically just don't confuse this with other options like this, okay? So this is the 50C version of the same size class, but what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you your JST plug, which I kind of wish this had a JST plug myself, but it is what it is. And keep in mind, if you've bought this battery to use for current ultra micros, you can use this battery with this particular adapter to actually interface this to some of the newest batteries or the newest planes that have come out that, that have the JST end, okay? So you may wanna pick one of those up while you're getting this adapter to go with your smart charger, okay? So just a couple of two cents worth there real quick before we get any further. Now, obviously we need to do some radio setup and that's the next thing we're gonna be doing. And uh, radio setup on helis sometimes leaves me a little bit baffled because they're helis. This one should be relatively easy. So we're gonna grab that and come right back. All right, so we're gonna do something weird and look at the manual together, okay? So because this is a heli, but first I have some important information that I want to take and uh, just uh, trimming to do. Well, listen, I just need to clip this here so that I can uh, make you can file that in your safety manual. I am going to file this it. in my uh, safety memorabilia file. And it's very important uh, that we get that in a safe spot. Yes. So if you guys, um, you'll want to make sure that you uh, read and obey all the FCC warnings. We okay, want to lose that. That's right. Safety that probably third. cost Horizon Hobby like you know fifty thousand dollars to put that thing on there, but that's okay. Just between friends. All right. So here's the thing. We're gonna set up a profile for this heli, but in order to do that, okay, we have to actually. I thought it had a white tail. I'm just looking at this right now, and it has white landing gear. White landing gear. But then I thought I had a bright white tail. Was that like the thing they said? No, that's that's so weird. Okay, did we get the wrong helicopter? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we have to build a profile for this thing to see if it works. Okay, so we're gonna pop this up here, and we're gonna cancel and back. I gotta cover the screen just in case because I don't there's know if no there's surprises. anything illegal. Yeah, so we're just gonna go add new model. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll. Okay, so over here on this manual, in the EN for English side, 
Uh, this is gonna tell you how to set it up for bind and fly, because it's a bind and fly. This is DX all the way through the NX10, okay? And so right here we say type heli swash normal. Okay, all right, so here we go, guys. Okay, add new model, highlight it, switch it to a heli, and create. All right, so ours takes a little longer than yours, just so you know. And by the way, you don't need the full NX10. You could probably do this on the NX70 just fine. Um, but we're gonna address that a little bit later in case there are issues. Okay, model select, we just came from there. Model type, we already set. Model name, this is where we're gonna type it in. And yes, we are getting dangerously close to full on model memory. And so this one's gonna be the Infusion 120. So we'll type that in and come right back. All right, so we got the Influ Infusion 120 Heli using the Legacy keyboard. Pretty cool. Swash type, and as we do, we're just gonna go through. Let's set to normal, okay, good. Flight mode setup, switch B. Switch two is inhibited. Hold switch, I wanna set to throttle hold here, okay. And then I want the warning, I, this this is what they show here, but I think that's backward. Let's let's test our theory. Yeah, why would you want the warning in that position? That's like not right. Okay, so I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go back down to system setup, disconnect RF, flight mode setup, and I want the warning if it's off, not if it's on. Do they assume you're setting your switches opposite the way that you do your switches? You do yours? I I don't know. That's normal. Hmm. No, no, that's not normal. Oh, it's in normal mode. Yeah, yeah. Why would they want the warning in the wrong condition? So yeah, switch that thing. The manual clearly shows to put it as one. It should be in zero. You want the warning on zero, not on one. You want to be warned if it's not on. You don't want to be warned if it's, you know, throttle hold on is safe. You're like A-OK. -okay. Um, also in, uh, I want to see, why does it let, not let me go down there? That's weird. See, it won't let me go down there. See? Maybe it only, hmm. Don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out later. Um, and then over here it says channel assign. Uh, so it looks like gear to F mode. So channel assign gear to from D to F mode. F mode's all the way to the left and plus one. There we go. Um, okay, so you see this? So channel one's throttle. Those are already preset. Then six is collective. Well, where's collective? Oh, it's inhibited, so you don't get to set that. And then seven is set to aux two. So I guess I need to put this to aux two. Whoops, went the wrong way, evidently. Or excuse me, aux two is it's, aux two. Yeah. Crap, what was it set to? It was set to E. It was set to E, yes. It was set to E. But like, I never use E for anything, so I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out what E does. Um, and then frame rate, we gotta change the frame rate to 11 milliseconds. So that is under frame rate, and it's called hybrid okay then over here we have uh the function list okay so servo setup so we should be able to walk out why why is it still warning us that's not correct all right so i'm back into the flight mode setup and what i'm learning or remembering is when this is when this is in the zero position that speaks to switch h Okay, this, this changes the condition, okay? But that doesn't necessarily change the condition of the warning. See, because it's preventing us from changing switch B, which is this first switch, from changing the mode, right? So when I come out of that, I'm allowed to go from normal to one to two. So that'd be like stunt one, stunt two, right? So that's all hunky-dory but I wanna be warned only if it's in the dangerous condition. 
not if it's in the hold position. So I don't understand why it's giving us the warning in that condition. So I have to find where the warning is. Warnings, there she blows. Okay, see this, watch. That condition, or absent that, I want it to also warn her for anything other than N, because that would mean you could at least have the stick low, okay? There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna test my theory, throttle holds off. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this, just totally shut it down. I'm in a dangerous condition because that prop could start, or not the prop, but the rotor could start. I'm gonna turn it back on. That is so confusing. So it should warn you now. It's gonna warn me now, which is what it should do because I'm in a potentially dangerous condition. Yep, zero, okay. not one. Now it will start up because we're safe. We have that on. How do we know? We walk over to here and we can see the throttle will not move up and down, but the pitch will, okay? Okay, so we may end up clipping some of that out. We don't really don't do that on radio setup, but it's just, it's frustrating when we have issues like that because here's the thing. I want you guys to be safe. And if you can move the stick up and down and the throttle's live, I don't want to get a warning in the condition where it's safe. I want to get a warning when it's unsafe. Also, if it's unsafe in this mode or this mode, it's not just that it warns you, it's that it literally will not start, okay? So let's talk about that. I'm gonna go ahead and go into stunt two, stick all the way up, which is terrible, okay? And holds off. Watch this, it's gonna give me three error conditions. Three that have to be cleared before I can start. And watch, this light won't come on. That's gonna be orange. See, look, throttle high, clear that. Flight mode one, that would be an error. Normal would be okay, and hold. So it forces you to get into a safe condition. And here on Brian Phillips RC, we wanna teach you guys not only how to use these utilities as much we know how, but we wanna make sure to try to give you at least a leg up on being safe, okay? Because safety is a factor. Now, this is a small heli, and some of you guys are gonna think, hey, no big deal. But I'm just gonna tell you right now, the little ones are the ones that get you because you'll think that you got it all under control, and next thing you know, you're getting cut in the face. Don't get cut in the face. Okay, back to the setup. All right, so we gotta do all this crap here, which is dual rates and expo. They're talking about all these rates, and then they're talking about this, and they're talking about that, and this. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Dual rates and expo. Okay, rates and expo. Looks like they want it set to switch F, which is fine, because that's where I would normally do that. And it looks like on this one, they want position zero is 100, 100, and expo is 25, okay? So we'll do 25. Now, normally I do a different setup, but since I'm not, you know, like super expert on helis, I just kind of defer to their judgment because I want to get the best shot at success. Okay, so this is gonna be 25% and rates at 75, okay? So if you go to rates at 75, there's a cat <laughs> playing with a Jenga block. Uh, okay, great. All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing for all three axes of control with the understanding that, of course, we're probably gonna start in the middle because that's where this switch will normally live. You can also set a warning for that switch condition at startup if you're concerned you might forget. So if you're like me, and you don't fly helis every day, it might be advisable to kind of remind yourself to be in that setting to start or something like that, right? Okay, so switch F for all of these. Whoa, little overshoot there. Whoops. So if you guys are unaware, here on Brian Phillips RC, you can help support us by buying stuff from the links in the video description below. That helps to make up for the time investment we put into this video or these videos. We're up to like almost 2,000 of them. So it's not just one or two, it's literally thousands of them. So we appreciate you doing that if you find something you really like. Okay, so next move, gyro inhibit, really. Yep, it's already inhibited. Okay, then the timer, they want a countdown. Okay, so let's go to timer. 
They're suggesting a five minute timer and they want to make this not a one out, but just when we're over 25%. Okay, that's fine. I want one minute. I want a voice call out at 20 seconds. I want nothing. 10 seconds, I want voice. And then I want vibrate, tone and vibrate for expiration with the tone every minute thereafter. Okay. Now we're going to set up these throttle curve. Looks like channel. These are all normal. These are all normal. So we don't really need to do anything, but that'd be under servo setup. Okay. Then we need to do throttle curve. Okay. So in normal, the throttle curve is going to be 0, 0,34. Okay, so Z, So under normal, highlight it. It's going to go normal, 34, then 48, then 55, and then 65. So that's probably about right for a guy like me. And then did they want Expo? They don't say if they want Expo active or not. And in this one, they're gonna have, this would be like stunt one. It's gonna be, geez, 75, really? That's weird. 75. Oh, because there's no pitch. So they're trying not to overdrive the, the motor. Hmm. That's, wait a second, that's point one. We're on throttle, right? Yep, throttle curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is why you need your throttle hold, guys. Really good way to get cut. Especially if you're a plain guy and you pretend to do heli stuff every once in a while to entertain your audience. <laughs> it's supposed to be a joke, guys, relax. Okay, so that's an interesting curve. It looks like a smiley face. Okay, so then two. We're gonna go down here and do 85. So we're just literally scrolling this in, okay? Then 77. And then we wanna be at 75. and then 77, and then 85. There we go. And then they don't tell us what to set the hold to. They do down here for pitch curve, but on hold, you wanna make sure that's zero, okay? Then pitch curve, so under normal, we want the pitch curve to be, uh, zero is gonna be 30. Then we're gonna have 40. Then we're gonna have 50, which is already 50. And then we're gonna have 75, then 100. Okay, pretty cool. So there's that. Then in idle up or stunt one and stunt two, we have just zero through 100 in a linear range. And then for hold, looks like point one, we're gonna be 25%. Then we're gonna have 37%, so it's a lot like. Then 75, then 100. Okay, pretty cool. Then we'll walk out of here. Now we need to set up P mix one and then cyclic to throttle. Okay, so these are mixing. So we'll go down to mixing, cyclic to throttle. Hmm, that's kind of nice. That's really easy. But I'm gonna set up P mix one. So we're gonna set this as normal. And we're gonna go from I, so exercise the I button. Okay, it's not gonna let me do that, so I have to scroll it over. So that's gonna be I. And that's gonna to go to gear. Okay, and then the rate is gonna be zero and minus 125. All right, so there's minus 125, and the offset is gonna be plus 100, OK? 
okay? Just scroll these things in. This is gonna be like the panic button. That's gonna be tied to switch I. Oh, for God's sake. You see what just happened? It's because I didn't have that turned on. Oh, you have to do that first? <sighs> yeah. Well, that's really annoying. Do you guys see what I just did there wrong? Because I didn't have it set to I, it basically undid all those changes for the rates. So I'm gonna scroll back in. So when they're setting up that menu, why don't they have you pick the switch first? Well, that would be a good question for the system developers. I'm sure you're all watching this video, hoping that I don't crash and embarrass myself. Okay. So when you do that, it pulls the gear channel down. Okay? Okay. All right, so we can walk out of that. And then we have the cyclic to throttle tie right here. And it looks like for aileron to throttle, it's an 18%. Do you need to switch to the flight mode thingy first before you do all that? Okay, I'll do what you said on flight mode, okay? So it looks like we're just doing it in idle, uh, not idle up so much, but stunt one, stunt two, or flight mode one, flight mode two. So in those modes, we want aileron to throttle at 18%. And then 18% for both left and right. Then elevator to throttle, we're gonna do 18%. They got all sorts of stuff mixed in here. And then nothing for rudder to throttle, and then that's gonna be activated upon certain flight modes, but not necessarily in hold or normal, okay. So that pretty much covers this, that covers this, that covers this, these we checked, we did that, and then we did a, the countdown. So mm -hmm. panic mode operation is gonna be bind button, press this panic mode on, and release this panic mode off, okay? So we should be getting really close to starting this heli up. Okay, so a couple things. We have 16 foot high ceilings here. There are lights above us, so we may have to kind of be a little bit careful that we don't have the propensity to crashing, but I am going to be flying indoors to see how this goes. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you do have the propensity to crashing. Well, I have the propensity to crashing anyway. Um, okay, so if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, you may not be aware of this, but I do fly helis. I'm just not as good at it as I want to be, okay? And if you're anything like me, don't, Quit, don't give up. I mean, you can sit and fly simulators all day long until you're really in the air with a real holly. You may not really get the full picture, okay? So without further ado, 300 milliamp hour. I wanna see which way this slides in. Okay, so it's a pretty tight pocket. You can do 280 milliamp hours as well, which is the original size. Now these leads are a lot longer than the first earlier versions. And so I'm gonna be able to run that all the way through and around. And then that looks like, I mean, that could totally be a bind plug. But I'm, I'm not sure if I have to do that. Where is the binding instructions? Do they talk about that here? Because they did give us that plug. And I, I assume that it's just gonna automatically go into the bind mode. They haven't talked about it yet. Transmitter and receiver binding, there it is in the middle of page six, but that doesn't mean we have to do it. How would you How would you not do it? That's what doesn't I'm, you're saying like an ultra micro yeah, airplane? Yeah, where it just like goes into bind mode automatically. Insert the bind plug into the receiver. Oh, fine. Do you guys remember inside of my mystery sack? Right here, guys, this is what I'm talking about. It's the bind plug which is the same as those voltage plugs on the different receivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had to plug into this port here, guys. My apologies. There's one at the very top there that puts you in bind mode. You can see the flashing orange light like we're used to. And then I'm gonna go into bind. This should work. Okay, good. So we got it. Now this is where 
You just want to be a little bit careful as it auto configures and everything is working now. Okay, good. So we got all sorts of warnings going, which is always nice. I don't know why. See the warning? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to warnings, um, audio events, telemetry warnings, smart battery. Okay, so we're not worried about that. I'm not worried about overcharge and startup volts. It probably just didn't catch it at first and then once it does catch it, it basically corrects that, okay? See that? So it's giving us a warning still. So I gotta go back down to, it's under telemetry or audio events, telemetry warnings, smart ESC. Total cells is not three, is it? No, but you said this two. is two. Mm -hmm. So two cells, that's why it's warning, okay? Smart battery. I'm just gonna go ahead and, I don't really care about startup voltage, to be honest. I've never liked that, because it always seems to cause problems. But the truth is, if we're at 8.1 volts, then it's enough to not hit. Well, unless one of them's lower. But this thing doesn't know any better. I don't know how it knows, okay? Because it's, it's not a smart battery. Okay, that goes back, that goes forward, that rolls left, that rolls right. Okay, so, so far we actually have the helicopter responding, which is good. And we can see that it's auto leveling or attempting to auto level, I think. No, it might just be stabilization right now. So we'll have to make sure we go into forward programming here in a minute and verify a couple of different loose ends. So I'm just gonna put this canopy back on. It's super easy to put on. Um, I'm kind of running into a bit of a mechanical bind there. There we go. So I'm gonna put this lid back on. There we go. Okay, so we've got that on. Pretty sweet looking heli. It's super small, very light. Um, okay, so let's go into forward programming and see what we've got in here. Because I just want to make sure I know what's going on. If it even connects. Okay, so safe. Stability. Okay, so it says hold off. Okay, now in normal mode, all the way down, there should be no movement when I turn off throttle hold. So I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't jump to life. Plus we're in forward programming. So now it says normal, okay. Hold. And see how it says stability off. Okay, so that's like your auto leveling. Okay, panic. You can see the change in pitch. Okay. And then safe, that's where we just came from. Yep. So we should be okay. All right, so we're gonna pause for just a sec. Okay, so basically I just wanted to double check that I believe safe was working because sometimes it's kind of hard to know if safe is actually working. And the way I can usually tell on a heli is I will hold the helicopter up and I will lean it and you should see it but that seems like it's going back, okay? So in hold mode, it's off. Okay, now we're in forward programming, so I'm just gonna give myself a wide breath here, just in case, right berth. Holds off, so in normal, it's on. This shouldn't start. It's off, and it's off, okay? So if you want that on, you can turn that on. But I wouldn't suggest it unless you're deciding you want to not do tricks, okay? All right, so we do have auto leveling on. All right, so in that case, I think the next move is to do some spool up, but I just wanna point out, don't lose that thing because it's definitely an unusual size for people like me. So hopefully we answered some questions. 
When we get into helis, there's always more questions than answers. And that's something that we're hoping that we can eliminate for you because you can watch me screw it up first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our stuff cleaned up and come right back. All right guys, so we're gonna try this right now. Throttle holds off, normal mode. We're gonna see how this goes. Oh, that seems pretty good. Camera crew and I are gonna be kind of safe. Letting it spool up. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, so we're at 60%. Swash plate is or on the throttle, the collective, if you will. And that looks pretty good, pretty easy to fly so far. Obviously we have auto leveling and you can see the thing is super smooth, super stable. And you guys have seen me fly other helicopters. I'm usually not quite this confident with them because this thing is rock solid in the air. And I'm not having to like scream either. I mean, I'm talking a little bit louder because it's not like super hard. It's weird when you hear it go from like regular speed to like idling down to come down to the ground. I don't feel out of control at all. And look how responsive it is. I mean, normal mode guys with auto leveling. This is really good. Now I'm bringing it intentionally back just to land it on this counter. That is like super easy to fly. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go up and over if you wanna just kinda go to the living room area there so you can feel more confident. And all I can say is the thing feels absolutely rock solid, folks. So that's really sweet. And I love having good, high quality helicopters that I can actually fly indoors and be in control. Cause let's talk about it for a second, guys. When you fly a helicopter indoor, you wanna be in charge of what's actually happening. And I'm gonna blow some napkins out potentially here. Let's go over the napkins. You guys have seen me fly before in here but it's not like I normally fly it all over the place like this. It's very responsive, very easy to fly. And what I need is very easy to fly because here's the thing, if it's not easy to fly, it's easy to crash. And easy to crash means it's no fun. So I gotta say, really enjoying this. Obviously I'm a little bit better pilot than I was just a few short years ago. But I gotta say, that feels really good. It feels like it's gonna keep up okay with a little bit of light wind. Uh, definitely don't feel like I'm janking the throttle stick around a lot to kind of do what needs to be done. I've got very tame controls on the, on the, the cyclic and the collective, which is really nice. So basically for those of you airplane guys like me, the throttle is very easy to keep it kind of at a nice hover. And then of course to pitch the thing, I don't want to knock the concendo off the stand. Let's see if we can fly over it without knocking it off. You think it will? Uh oh, Ooh, whoo, better be careful. Oh, and we have our fan off. We should turn the fan back on. Why is the fan off? I don't know, it was on earlier. I know, we're gonna turn it on. Camera crew's gonna slowly work our way over and turn on our 84 inch fan or 82 or whatever it is. So now the other thing is this flies on two S packs. We have voltage telemetry and it's quite easy to fly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basic, I'll see, I'll land over here. Let's go ahead and land it on top of this uh, cushion. Woo! It's just really easy to fly folks. Throttle holds on. It's actually just like super easy to fly. I don't understand. Um, why our fan is off, there, but there it goes. goes, there it goes. The schizophrenic fan has started. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get back into the throttle here. I'm not sure how this is gonna start up. So I'm in normal mode. It gets, there's a little bit of a wonkadelic moment as it works through its, its spool up. There we go. Oh yeah, no problem at all. So guys, I hope you can see, I'm actually very comfortable with this thing. Uh, it's quite quiet, which is cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fly out over here under the fan. Just so you can see that fan, is, it can move a lot of air. And yet this thing is just, just resilient as all get out. Ooh, I heard a noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and land. You hear that noise, camera crew? Oh yeah. Let's show the people what it looks like on the controller. 
okay? So I'm not sure if it's just like a middle stick position that was beeping. No, it was the, I think it was battery warning. When okay. I glanced over real quick, it said warning. And so you can see here we've got ESC status. And it looks like currently that's the low. That's the current voltage. Let's take back off and see what happens. Camera crew, you want to stay close so I can show the people. Okay. I'll let you. Very easy to take off. Very easy to fly. Yeah, there's our yeah, warning. Let's show the people. Warning, 6.7 volts. So I just don't want to lose it out of the sky here. So I'm going to bring it down and just gently put it down. Really easy. And then go straight into throttle hold. And you can see the RPMs and everything. That's totally That's sweet. Cool. So I got to say, guys, very easy to fly indoors. Throttle holds on. I'm in normal mode. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not sure I'm willing to take it out of normal mode inside of the living room. There are many pilots that would fly it around in here and have absolutely no problems. And you can just hear it just going to town right now. Mm -hmm. The AS3X is working itself uh, really hard, but flies great, really easy. I didn't know what to expect. We've had a number of different small helis like this, but just watching how quickly it goes up and down and responds and it doesn't bog down on power is really unexpected. Now let's show you just how easy it is to pop the battery out, okay? So we'll go ahead and lay this out of the way. It's just a micro pH 2S end, okay? And so I tangled mine up that way. And just remember these little 300 milliamp hour batteries, feel it camera crew. Yeah. It's toasty. A little bit. But it's not anything crazy. Uh, they, they will accept, this helicopter will accept up to 300 milliamp hour. You can do a 280 as well, but we're well below sub 250 limits here. Um, so I want to just try with a new battery and just see what we have because we have all these got charged, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're just going to plop in another one and we'll see how it does because I'm curious with all our radio setup and stuff, maybe we drew down the, the battery voltage. Okay, so I'm gonna put this battery in. I like the way it goes when it goes this direction with the label up. And it's pretty easy to do. Okay, and then throttle holds on, throttle sticks down, which I should not say the throttle stick, the collective is down. Okay, so we're gonna plug that in and just let it initiate for a second. Lay the transmitter in a safe spot. Okay, and then we'll just bring this back. Very easy to put the canopy on. Um, some of these helicopters, it's super hard to load the, to put the canopy on. And uh, so they did a good job with this. It fits the battery nicely. And uh, all right, so here we go, guys. We're gonna take back off. Throttle holds off. We're in normal. We're just gonna take off. The timer is just counting down now. Okay, so yeah, feels really good. I just wanna show you what I was talking about, the whole up and down thing. For being inside, that's pretty dang good. And like I said, I'm not really that good of a heli pilot, but I gotta say, this thing looks awesome. Camera crew, can you see that pretty good? Can you see the blades pretty good? Mm -hmm. I hope the people at home can. Because I definitely can see that helicopter good. And I love the way it looks in the light. That is so cool. And I got to say, real easy to take off, real easy to land. And usually where we run into problems with these smaller helis is you get into an air turbulation area. Like down here where you've got the tables and the chairs. And it's actually just quite easy to fly. And if I was a better pilot, it would be way, way easier to show how awesome this does. Look how nice it's staying level too. Mm -hmm. It moves a lot of air. Oh yeah, it really does. And that's, I think that's part of the reason why it flies good is because it's a collective pitch helicopter. It's not, it's not like a coaxial or some sort of a cheater with like an, you know, insane flight controller doing all the work for you. This is actually me flying it with the aid of safe. And so I don't feel like I'm just a spectator watching it. And where we've seen that is with helicopters like this or like this that have 
so much control taken away from you as a pilot, you can't do anything really that fun with them. Sure, they fly reasonably good, but they're gonna tip at an angle. They're, they might look good, but this thing is actually gonna be like stick and boom, 3D pilot, you know, can fly this and actually do cool stuff with it. Now, is it gonna be the same exact experience as if you went up to something bigger like this, where you've got the blade in, this is the Fusion 360, very good heli, very fun to fly, but this thing's gonna give you a real similar feel, it's just way small. And that's what's so cool. Now, granted, you guys know I don't really have the skills to flip this upside down and do insane things, but I probably could. I just don't wanna crash it right now. I feel more comfortable doing that outside, and so that's probably what we're gonna do. But I gotta say, what a sweet little heli. And I, I just really like the way it went together. The radio setup wasn't too bad. Um, it's definitely a lot better than having to go through you know, a complete virgin setup of a pre-built or unbuilt kit heli, I can tell you that. And the thing looks really nice. It's a beautiful looking little heli. I love the fact that we have a brushless motor back here and it keeps up really nicely. Um, and I think that's one of the big claims to fame when you get up to like the Fusion 360 is that you're gonna get stick and boom with like either a gear or a belt drive. And if I remember on this one, yeah. So we should have a belt drive on that. So once you start getting into belt drives, you're gonna have constant speed top and back, which is really nice. And so of course then you have pitch control servos that change the pitch back here. This is just gonna be a very basic setup because it is a brushless motor. We can get all that tight control from the ESC and flight controller, which is really nice, okay? So really neat, super fun. You guys gotta check it out if you're into helis and if you're into something that can fly inside. We're gonna try to get some outdoor footage as well for you, but it's a little bit dark right now. So also, sub 250, let's show it on a scale because I know some of you guys are wondering, is it actually sub 250? It is actually sub 250. We like to weigh these things because people do sometimes have questions about how heavy they are. So we'll just put it on a regular scale, nothing special about it. And there you go, we're 121 grams, as you can see, and that's all up with the battery. So that's pretty sweet. And I gotta say, really impressed. Good job, Blade. I'm really excited for this helicopter. I wanna get it outside, I wanna flip, flip it upside down, I wanna do a couple of tricks and just let you guys see that it can be done because this is not gonna be like some of the competitive offerings where you're just gonna be stuck auto leveling and really tight. And I am flying it in tight quarters here, um, but it feels very safe. Like I don't have any, con I don't have any concerns. We've taken planes, and, or we've actually flown planes in here too, but we've taken off a few helis in here and it's been like, wow, I can't believe we got that thing to take off. Or you'll have like a button that you press and it jumps up and jumps up too high and ends up getting close to lamps and fixtures and things like that. There was none of that. And also I did notice a little bit of hesitation in terms of uh, flight performance. When I go to take off, I noticed a little bit of waggle where it would kind of, you know, get a skew. And it's kind of like about 30% through the, the collective. So if you guys want to watch that with me, just see if you guys have any ideas. So camera crew is going to come behind me right here. And then we're just going to have you watch this, okay? You can see as the brushless direct drive motor starts spooling up, a little bit of walk to the left, no big deal there. And you see that little, that little gyroscopic effect? As you get up to speed, then you're good to go. And then you won't have that again. But it is something that you wanna kinda of keep an eye out for. But you know, the thing is flying dang good. I mean, it's darn near totally still. I can do a trim flight. I can set those things up. But I think for now, I'm actually quite happy with the way the thing is flying. And uh, good job, Blade. Yes, that is a Christmas tree in the background. It is February of 2024. So if you guys are watching this, uh, my wife will eventually take that down. There's planes in the way. 
Yeah, that's right. So as you can see, you know, the stick movements I'm making are not extreme. They're actually quite easy. And if you guys have ever seen a 3D heli, you're gonna understand what I mean when I say, this is quite easy to fly, okay? So now, what's gonna really tell the tale, I think, that's so cool that we've got the live RPMs. You can see the percentage basis of the motor output. That is so cool. And then throttle hold, of course. Guys, you just get all the data you want and it's just right there at your fingertips. It's super easy setup. All you have to do is follow along with us through the radio setup portion of this video. And I'm not sure if that's gonna follow after this flight or if this flight is gonna be the end, the culmination of this video. But I can definitely say, cool heli, great job on the Infusion 120. If you guys wanna buy one for yourself, you can check it out in the links of the video description below and you can get one right away, right now, and you can help support Brian Phillips RC. If you don't wanna support us in that way, but you wanna see like a bigger heli, all you have to do is just jump over to brianphillipsrc.com and you can help sort through the plethora of videos we've got, which are close to 2,000 videos. And you'll probably be able to find that exact plane, heli, quad, VTOL, ground vehicle, whatever it is, it's sorted by type and by manufacturer, hobby shop, affiliate relationship, however you wanna look at that so that you can find stuff real easy, okay? And again, that's Brian Phillips RC. We have links to that as well down below. So when you go over there, you can basically say, hey, you know, what other helis in this size are gonna be ones that I'm interested in, or you can find more about this. Again, should be populating on the screen right now, links to the playlist for this, like we do for every aircraft, ground vehicle, leaf blower that we've ever done on Brian Phillips RC so that you can find all the information we have about this particular product. The only time that gets a little confusing is if we have a couple of different liveries similar to the P51 that we just recently reviewed for Horizon that had the Voodoo livery and then they came out with the Detroit Miss. So we may have different playlists on planes like that. But generally speaking on helis, it should be pretty easy because we don't have 40 or 50 videos on those, but we do have 40 or 50 videos on some airplanes that we did real early on. So hopefully we've answered all your questions about this heli, whether or not you think you can fit into the mold of this particular heli. They call it a skill level two, and I'm gonna tell you this, a skill level one would be, you know, like a really basic drone that you can get. You can get those things, they're a dime a dozen, and they're usually, you know, here and gone in a few weeks. Something like this is gonna be a high quality, 3D capable, hobby grade helicopter that's just scaled really small. And that's why I really like helicopters like this. Sometimes we get these helicopters that are so over the top complicated and they're really expensive. And the other thing too is as soon as you tip them over, you hit the grass when you're landing, you know, they're gonna just self-destruct. This thing is supposed to tolerate things a little bit better. I'm gonna believe it when I see it, but the truth is, if you look on here, it's not like you have all metal construction, which I know some of you guys are gonna think that's not a good thing. I think it's a good thing when you have simple mechanics on a helicopter, because the more parts, the more complexity, the less reliability and also the more crap you have to fix when you do crash, okay? So really excited about this. I think it checks a lot of the boxes that I would normally use to measure a successful heli, and it did a really nice job. So there's not many aircraft we don't like, admittedly, but this one I really like. It makes me feel comfortable with the sticks. I'm not a super skilled 3D pilot, but I can flip them up and do a couple of things. I'm just not gonna do it in my living room. So you guys will see that hopefully in the outdoor footage and it's admittedly pretty small. So just remember, that's the other thing is if, you're, if your eyes give you trouble, you can fly close because you feel comfortable doing it. And so that's a big deal for a lot of you, especially as you transition from airplanes into helis. We want you guys to understand that there is a bridge that's gonna get you there. And it doesn't have to be RC, you know, auto flight, okay? 
because that's fun too, but it's different fun. I like flying when I'm actually flying. Safe does a lot of the work, admittedly. I know what you heli pilots are thinking, but this is going to give you that, that bridge that you want. Okay. Cause and you can turn safe off. Yes. Some of those you can literally can't really, right there. Boom. Yeah. And that's the big problem. You're going to you spend can't get out of you know, auto six, leveling 600 and something odd dollars. Sometimes you can get them on sale for in the mid four hundreds, almost $500. And you're going to have basically a GPS driven drone. Now I'm not saying that that's not cool because we get a kick out of that stuff too, but it's a different flight experience, hobby grade build, but not hobby grade flight performance because you can't get out of the safety features. Oh, but you can press a button and have a flip upside down on it. So I don't, I mean, it's cool, but I really don't care. I want to be able to do it myself. Right. And if you want to add that feature, cool. But I want to be able to shut off the auto leveling in the stabilization and stability and stability and all these different names that all these companies come up with. At the end of the day, I want to be the guy flying that aircraft. And I feel like right here, the Infusion 120 gives me that flight experience. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably haven't been flying a ton of airplanes for the last 10 years, loving every second of it and struggling in the heli arena. Okay. I actually had helis before we did the YouTube channel. I had a ton of coaxial helicopters. I had a ton of little throwaway helicopters throw away, you know, you buy them for a hundred bucks and then you crash them and they're garbage. Okay. You can't get spare parts, nothing like that. And then I had a few that were more like hobby grade, but it was so early. It was like, probably 25 how long ago 20 years ago yeah 18 roughly to 20 18 years 20 ago. years ago and it would have been a blade product but i didn't even have a tail gyro no for god's safe, sake no no safe no auto leveling that thing was in the air crashed immediately yeah. every time i crashed it it was like a two-day project and you know the parts weren't too bad but the thing is you know you spend 40 50 bucks next thing you know you're like i don't want to crash it so i don't want to fly it right so all you do is you take off and you got the tail beam boom pointed straight at you and you're just sitting here locked in fear i'm going to tell you what safe does is it unlocks the fear so that you can i mean you still there's still some fear right but it's not the same level of fear that you would have had 20 years ago doing this okay right. Now, I'm not saying this is the only helicopter that has that, by the way. That 360 is a great example of a helicopter that's going to get you into that next stage. And then flanking on either side are even more extreme helicopters. And we just want to get you flying them, okay? Now, obviously, this Infusion 120 is a great product. It doesn't mean it's the only great product. And that's why Brian Phillips RC is here for you. Because yes, of course, we want you to buy this thing. We want to help support these companies that work with us. But at the end of the day, we're all about you guys and what you really need right now. And I'm telling you right now, I know a ton of pilots out there that really want to get better at flying helicopters. And they're just not into flying simulators. I'm going to tell you what, if I have to fly a simulator, that's like putting a kid in a candy store and getting him to go eat the lettuce. You know, you're just never going to go to the lettuce. You're going to go fly the thing you want right away. So what do I do? I fly an F-14 or I fly, you know, some plane that I could never afford or I fly some like giant airliner or whatever it is, right? I quickly lose interest in, but I'm telling you in real life, I want to fly these things. I want some real pain and suffering attached when I crash so that you have a real experience and I want to really do it. I don't want to just go on a computer and do it. I know you kids, you're, that's what you tell me. You're like, you got to be on the sticks. You got to be on the computer. That's how you get a good at 3D. Well, in that case, I'll see you on the next auto leveling helicopter <laughs> because that's really where I am. So when's the Apache coming? When's the Cobra coming? When's the, when's the MD 500 coming horizon? So that being said, really good product. Like it a lot. Love the fact that I'm flying it on my transmitter and not some throwaway thing that I got, you know, from some Chinese shop somewhere. So very happy, checks all the boxes on the major things that I want in a heli. Now, let's just hope it flips upside down and I can recover and the panic mode works well because that's gonna be the difference between success and failure for me.
So there you have it, guys. Hopefully we answered your questions. Leave it in the comments below if we didn't, and I'll try to answer. But again, we have a huge community of people that really understand these things really well. And we've had a lot of people that have come alongside us with the helis to try to encourage us, not only because they wanna see me succeed, but they know that if I succeed, I'm gonna drag a bunch of you into the habit with me. And that's what I wanna do. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. And so we know that you guys are with us. And if your wife is supportive or your family is supportive, they're gonna let you buy something like this, get it. It's gonna be super fun. We'll put links down in the video description below. We'll link to the battery and then we'll link to this special charge cable if you don't already have one so that you know what it is and you don't have to go searching for it because that is kind of a pain to find. Um, that is one thing I've always struggled to find is adapters. Oh, they're terrible. So we'll have links for you so you don't have to search for it. Um, also link to the transmitter. And if you need something else that we didn't include, uh, ask us in the comments. We'll do our best to get back to you. Special thanks to our Patreons for supporting us on a monthly basis and YouTube members. We appreciate you guys. Super thanks. Thank you. And PayPal. Thank you. But at the end of the day, out of those four things, we'd rather you be buying helis, VTOLs, airplanes, batteries, the things that we love on this channel. We bring to you, it's not just because we want to sell a bunch of these things. Although there is a certain aspect of that because if we help encourage you guys to buy more of these, then what happens is that the companies that are making these crazy flying objects, they're gonna get rewarded financially. And guess what happens? Then it's gonna drive down the cost. It's gonna grow the hobby. That's what we wanna do. We wanna grow the hobby. We wanna get, get people into the hobby for the right reasons at the, wrong, at, at the right time. We wanna make sure that people are being encouraged in the right direction. We don't wanna have a bunch of one and dones. That's where you get the wrong helicopter for the wrong reason or the wrong airplane for the wrong reason at the wrong time. Crash, done, customer gone for life. Or maybe 10 years or five years or whatever it takes for that pain to go away. We wanna help get people back in the hobby and we mostly wanna get people off the bench from the sidelines watching us do it. We want you guys to be doing it with us. And that's why we always say, just get one from the links. It's one of the number one ways to support us because then they pay a small commission to us, not you via PayPal or Patreon or whatever it is. We don't wanna poo poo that. If you guys have made up in your mind, you're gonna support us, we wanna let you do that. But at the end of the day, we want you flying. That's really what we want. We want a big audience of people that's growing so that you guys can be out at the flight field really living it up. And that's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. So we hope we've got you from the box to the air because that's literally, we were in the box here an hour and a half ago and now we're in the air. I mean, technically we're not in the air because we're inside the building, but we're still in the air inside the building. We're gonna be in the air outside hopefully and you guys will hopefully have already seen that clip and hopefully we answered your questions. Anything you wanna add camera crew? I think that covers it. All right, thanks for watching guys. The Infusion 120 from Blade. Really cool, super fun. We hope you'll get one.